Hi everybody and welcome to the July edition of USA Judo CEO video blog. I'm Keith Bryant, CEO of USA Judo, and I'm standing here in front of Garden of the Gods, which is a city park here in Colorado Springs, Olympic City, USA, one of my favorite places uh, to go in the city. And um, there's a lot going on that I wanna just jump right in. And first of all, I wanna thank everybody that went to Spokane to attend the, uh, the Junior Olympic National Championships. It was one of the biggest events that we have had in many years. And so I wanna thank all the participants, the coaches, Coaches, family members and then also all of the volunteers and people that hosted us in Spokane great city for an event uh, so thank you for that also want to thank you for bearing with me when I did the Olympic Day uh, video with you all in Spokane and uh, that video that video on Facebook has had 12,000 views and had a reach of 128,000 people which is one of our our highest rated Facebook posts so thank you again for that so with JOs complete, we're now looking ahead to November where we'll have our final event of the year, which will be the President's Cup. That'll be down in Irving, Texas on November 18th. It's the day after the Dallas Invitational at the venue that it's been uh, for many years now, the Irving Convention Center. So we hope that you'll, we'll see you there. Uh, the registration packet will be put on the website here shortly if it's not already by the time of this video. So check out more information on the USA Judo website. So speaking of events, we're actively working right now on the 2019 and 2020 USA Judo National events. And you've probably seen on our website through uh, or through our social media announcements that next year's Senior National Championships will be in Las Vegas at the Westgate on June 1st and 2nd. So we're pretty happy about that. Still working out the other details and have uh, many cities that we're talking with right now. And as we're going through this process, we have heard from some of the members what are we looking for in trying to host an event? And so just a few things to, to share with you of what we are looking at is overall, what is the affordability for our members, uh, the participants, families, as well as USA Judo? And probably the first thing is, uh, you know, what's the event uh, venue going to cost? Uh, is it even available at the times that we're looking to have that? And so when you look at that, you have to look at how involved is the Sports Commission or the Convention and Visitors Bureau? So we look at cost of venue, all the supporting things, uh, bleachers, staging, tables, chairs, internet, copier machines, all those things that, that uh, you know, nobody really thinks about but do have a price to them. And then in addition to the venue, the hotel meeting and sleeping room costs. For a number of years, we've tried to keep the sleeping room costs at $119 a night. And as we look at various cities and maybe larger cities that uh, are more destination locations, that is gonna be a very hard price for us to keep at the 119, but we're, we're doing our best to do that. And then transportation, how much are flights into that city? How far is the hotel from the airport? How far is the venue from the hotel? Those are things that we consider as well. And as we say, des destination location is important because we know that families are burning their hard earned vacation to come to judo tournaments. We would like to have uh, something that they could do in addition to judo competition as a family to enjoy their vacation as well. And then lastly, we just try to spread it around the country so that not any one region of the United States is inconvenienced with too much travel to one location or another. So staying on the topic of events, our junior athletes have been busy traveling around the world and competing over the last month. Uh, several of the competitions include the Pan American Cadet Championships, where we won five medals, one gold and four bronze. Uh, the Pan American Junior Championships, where we had one silver and four bronze. The Montreal Junior Pan American Cup, two gold medals, two silver and two bronze. And then the Junior European Cup in Poland, where we won a bronze medal there too. So our juniors are showing that they can compete with uh, some of the international competitors and uh, want to give my congratulations to all of them for, for a job well done and, and well representing Team USA. The senior elite athletes have been taking a break from competition, but they have been actively training uh, very hard at the Kodakan in Japan and then also at uh, Castle de Fels in Spain. And their next competition will be the Zagreb Grand Prix, which will be at the end of this month. And then also at the, at the end of this month will be the uh, 2018 FIZU America Games in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which will feature American judoka representing the National Collegiate Judo Association, as well as Team USA. So again, congratulations to all those that uh, have been training hard and competing around the world and best of luck to those that the, go into the competitions later on this month. 
related to domestic events here in the United States, the USA Judo Board recently passed two motions that will have an impact on our local and regional events uh, in particular. And the first is the space between mats at competition. Uh, historically, we've we followed the IJF spacing of four meters, and we have now reduced that to three meters. We heard from local event hosts and organizers that trying to get a, an affordable venue space uh, that could fit as many mats as possible. Uh, the extra meter was causing some some distress and maybe reducing the uh, the number of, of people that could attend their, their event. So hopefully that'll be a, a great thing for local event organizers while also you know focusing on uh, keeping things safe for all of our competitors. The other motion that was recently passed is in regards to religious headgear. And so for referees, uh, we've always been okay with uh, referees wearing religious headgear. This was really more around the, the athletes and the competitors. As you may know, the IJF does not allow any headgear of any, time, any kind, religious or otherwise. But here in the United States, with uh, the freedom of religion and speech and things like that, we felt that we wanted to handle it on a case-by-case -case basis. And so if there is, uh, say, a female athlete that wants to wear a hijab, uh, we will evaluate that. And as long as it doesn't cause a, a safety infraction uh, for either competitor or give an undue competitive advantage, then we will likely be approving that. It's, we'll just have to make sure the, the hijab or whatever headgear is tight around the face uh, and tucked into the judo gi. And it's uh, something similar to what you'll see in, in the pictures here. So going back a month in June, we had the American Judo Development Model Task Force come to Colorado Springs to meet with the USOC and begin discussions of creating the, the outline and the basic fundamental uh, building blocks of an athlete and coach development pathway for judo in the United States. And we haven't announced it yet, so I uh, wanted to, to thank the task force members that were in attendance and from USA Judo, that's Ed Liddy and Brian Olson. From the USJF, it's Roy Kawaji and Dan Kikuchi. And then from USJA, it's Jason Morris and Salida Shoot. So I thank those six for taking time out of their busy schedules to come out and had some great collaborative discussion uh, and very collegial and, and uh, team building between the three organizations too, which uh, I thought was just really great to see. Also want to thank uh, the folks from the USOC uh, that helped with some of the funding with that, as well as the facilitation, so especially the coaching division, strategic planning, and NGB development. Really want to thank those individuals as well for all of their hard work uh, during that, uh, that process and the meeting over those few days. And so as we talk about destination locations and you see the beauty uh, that's behind me here in Colorado Springs, I wanna make you aware of two training camps that are coming up here uh, in the next few months. The first will be the World Team Training Camp at the Colorado Springs Olympic Training Center taking place August 20th to the 25th. And then the second is a veterans camp that we're working with uh, the Veterans Committee putting together that will take place in late September, we think the 28th to 30th. So check out the website for more information on that. And that's about it for this month. If, uh, if you do have questions or topics that you'd like me to cover in future CEO video blogs, please email those to me at keith.bryant at usajudo.us and I'll do my best to fit them in in one of the future video blogs and hope that you'll make it out for one of the training camps here in Olympic City, USA, Colorado Springs. You can see the beauty behind me here and if you do make it, hope you'll stop by the USA Judo offices as well. So thanks again for your support in growing judo in America and I look forward to seeing you soon.